I recently finished production on the first of a new series called Deep Dives, in which I covered Prefetch in great detail. In fact, the episode was more than 30 minutes long. Depending on when you're watching this, it may or may not yet be released. The last nine minutes or so were all about memory forensics and prefetch, and how in many cases we can extract prefetch data directly from memory. As I was recording it, I thought to myself, wow, this would actually make a pretty good standalone introduction to memory forensics episode. So that's exactly what I did. I chopped off the last nine or so minutes and turned it into this introduction to memory forensics episode. Now, if you've already watched Prefetch Deep Dive, you probably don't need to watch this. But if you haven't, or if you're just interested in Prefetch as it relates to memory forensics, this episode is for you. I hope you enjoy it. We're going to be using volatility to analyze Prefetch within our memory sample, but we don't yet have it installed on this Ubuntu 18.04 virtual machine. If you're looking at the official GitHub repo for the release version of volatility, so we'll grab this URL so that we can do a git clone. This will pull down the newest release version, which as of this recording is 2.6.1, though 3 is available in beta. Let's change into the volatility directory and run vol.py dash dash info. This will show us whether or not volatility is working and will also show us which profiles are available to us. And as you can see, we have profiles for Windows 10 x64 all the way up to build 18.362, which as of this recording is the very newest release version of Windows 10. Now let's run vol.py dash h and we'll grep for the word prefetch. As you will see, we have no matches because we don't yet have any prefetch parser plugins installed. Let's go into the volatility plugins directory underneath the volatility tree. And now you'll notice I have a second tab opened, which contains several different volatility plugins. The one we're interested in is prefetch.py, which from the description says that it was updated about three years ago for Windows 8, 8.1, and 10. Let's click on that. And then we're going to click on the raw tab on the right side. The reason why is because I'm going to grab the URL from the address bar so that we can wget and download this one single prefetch file. I'm not interested in git cloning the entire repo because I only want this single plugin. So go ahead and paste in the URL here and this will pull down that prefetch.py file directly into our plugins directory. Now, if we go back to where we were, we should be able to repeat that grep command and hopefully we'll see the prefetch parser plugin available. So let's run that and there it is. So far, so good. So at this point, we're ready to begin analyzing our memory image, or at least we should be, right? Let's see what happens. And here is the memory sample that we're going to use. You'll notice that I've named the file name with the correct volatility profile that we'll need to use to analyze it, just to make it a little bit easier. So we don't need to use image info or KDBG scan. That'll save us a little bit of time. So let's go ahead and specify dash F and point to that mem dump file. And then of course we'll use dash dash profile equals. And the profile to use of course is win 10 X 64 underscore 17 134. And then our plugin is simply prefetch parser. So let's go ahead and run this and see what happens. And unfortunately, we get an error that says can't load MS compression library. Remember that prefetch files in Windows 10 are compressed. So this parser is unable to do anything with it without having access to this third party compression library. Okay, great. How do we fix that? Well, we're going to need to install that library. But before we can even do that, we need to get the library. So let's go ahead and become root, as you can see here. And let's switch back to our browser and go to that third tab that I had opened. This is the GitHub repo for the open source implementation of the Microsoft compression algorithms. And as you can see, when we scroll through here, there are numerous compression algorithms. It turns out that the express Huffman algorithm is the one that actually is utilized by our prefetch files, the header for which is MAM. So let's go ahead and grab the URL so that we can do a git clone of the repo as we have done before. And we'll simply go ahead and type git clone and paste in that URL here. And I'm in slash root slash R-O-O-T. So here we go. I've just pulled it down. 
Let's change into the directory. And you'll notice that we have a build.sh shell script. This is what we're going to need to run to build the library. So let's go ahead and run build.sh so that we can compile it. This will only take a couple of moments. And when we're done, we are going to be left with this file you see highlighted in this light yellow color called libmscompression.so. So what we need to do is move this file into a specific location on our Ubuntu virtual machine. And that location is slash USR slash lib, user lib. So I've just moved it. And at this point, we should now have that plugin alongside these other plugins. And you can see it right here. So we should be good to go at this point. And we no longer need to be root. So what we can do is simply type exit and go back to where we were. And now let's repeat our command and see if we have any further success this time. Okay, great, another error. Looks like we're missing a parameter. We need to specify a mam dump directory. This is where it's going to actually dump the prefetch files from memory. Remember that mam refers to that express Huffman algorithm. So let's go ahead and specify said directory. We'll make a dump dir. We could basically call this anything we want, but just dump dir for the illustration here. And then we will go ahead and specify this parameter, dash dash mam dash dir equals dot slash dump dir. All right, now let's see what happens. And finally, it looks like it's starting to do something. So let's give this a couple of seconds to cook and see if we actually get some meaningful information. And it looks like we got some stuff. So let's scroll up to the top and see what we have. The header indicates we have prefetch file, execution time, times, and size. Let's look at that first cmd.exe. It says four times. And if you look underneath it, we do indeed have four execution times. svchost.exe, this particular one anyway, has an execution runtime of one. The search filter host has 18. So how many should we expect to see here? The answer is eight. And that's exactly what we see, because remember the last eight times are tracked on Windows 8 and later. For ping.exe, we should see eight as well, because there's 12 runtimes and the last eight have been tracked. So it does indeed look like the plugin is working and parsing prefetch directly from memory. How cool is that? We get the prefetch file, we get the execution time, we get the time count and the size. And remember, we get execution times for up to eight of the last executions, which is what Prefetch will show us with Windows 8 and later. If we go into that dump dir, here are all the .pf files themselves. So quite a few of them it was able to extract out of memory. Now, if I run file against one of these, you'll notice it just says data. It doesn't really recognize it. But let's look at it in hex. Remember that express Huffman algorithm that I told you was a header of MAM? Well, there it is. So clearly this looks like a valid prefetch file that it's extracted directly out of memory. So that's how easy it is. But remember, the important thing about memory forensics is that there are no guarantees in memory forensics. What you're looking for may be there, it may not be there. It just depends on a number of different factors, including whether or not it's still in memory or has been paged to disk, whether or not the time of the memory acquisition was in close proximity to when that prefetch was in memory. So again, there are no guarantees, but it's just important to note that prefetch may be able to be obtained directly from memory. And now you've seen how to get that prefetch parser plugin up and running and working with Windows 10 prefetch files. Pretty cool. And that wraps up this Introduction to Memory Forensics episode. I hope you've enjoyed this quick look at the Prefetch Parser Volatility plugin. And as always, thank you for watching, thank you for subscribing, and I will catch you in the next episode.